सो हेलो हाई एंड वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू गाइज वेलकम बैक वंस अगेन टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ पी आई बी टू फोर सेवन इन टूडेज क्लास वील बी टॉकिंग वील बी डिस्कसिंग द पी आई बी न्यूज फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी सिक्स टू ट्वेंटी एट ऑफ फेब्रवरी टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री ओके सो या विदाउट एनी डिले लेट्स बिगिन विद द सेशन एंड टूडेज क्लास विल बी क्वाइट लॉन्ग थोड़ा सा लंबा होगा सेशन आज का सो अपनी कुर्सियों की पेटियां बांध ले टाइट इन योर सी बिल्स क्वेश्चन नंबर वन The seventh edition of Asia Economic Dialogue 2023 has been held in Pune in Maharashtra under the theme Asia and the Emerging World Order. AED, which is Asia Economic Dialogue, is an annual flagship geo-economics conference of which of the following ministry? So, if you are smart enough, you can easily answer this question when we are talking about Asia Economic Dialogue, which means something which we are talking about internationally, right? so the correct answer must be the ministry of external affairs theek hai so let's talk about this asia economic dialogue and then we will come back to, we will go back to the question so the seventh edition of asia economic dialogue took place in pune in maharashtra and it is an annual flagship event of ministry of external affairs theek hai it is an annual flagship geo economics conference of ministry of external affairs which is currently headed by mr s j shankar theek hai It is every year hosted by Ministry of External Affairs in collaboration with Pune International Centre. Pune International Centre के साथ मिलके इसको organise करा जाता है. This year's theme was Asia and the Emerging World Order. You should remember the theme. This is very very important. Asia and the Emerging World Order was the theme of this year's Asia Economic Dialogue. And what happens during this dialogue? क्या होता क्या है? What are the topics of discussion? so basically it is a dialogue based in india where asian countries come together to discuss to talk trade finance and business opportunities right as the name says it is an economic dialogue so we, we must be discussing economics only so all the asian countries come together to discuss trade finance and business opportunities during this asia economic dialogue which is organized every year by the ministry of external affairs okay <clears throat> so therefore guys the correct answer will be what the correct answer is ministry of external affairs option b ministry of external affairs is the correct answer moving ahead to question number 2 the inception meet of w20 which is the women right which is which is actually women 20 which is of course the part of g20 right women 20 is the part of g20 right where this group focuses on the issues related to women in the g20 member nation and tries to find out the solutions theek okay? hai so women 20 the inception meet of w20 under india's g20 presidency has been held in aurangabad of maharashtra this aurangabad is of maharashtra there are two aurangabads one is in bihar and one is in maharashtra so this meeting took place in maharashtra's aurangabad under the theme pursuit of gender equality equity and dignity for women led development which of the following are among the priority areas of w20 under india's g20 presidency so during uh, uh, w20 has five priority areas theek hai to us pe aayenge but before that just remember this that this was the inception meet which was organized by ministry of women and child development of w20 under india's g20 presidency in aurangabad of maharashtra and these are the five priority areas of w20 under india's g20 presidency which are grassroots women leadership women entrepreneurship bridging the gender digital divide women and girls as change makers in climate change and finally creating pathways through education and skill development right and i would suggest you to learn all these five priority areas even if uh, the examiner will not ask in your examination but you can use such data such uh, such information in your descriptive answer writing theek okay? hai moving ahead remember this inception meetings theme was pursuit of gender equality equity and dignity for women led development now if i talk about india's vision of w20 or you can say vision of w20 under india's g20 presidency is to create a world of equality and equity where every woman live with dignity right har mahila dignity ke sath rahe and also this uh, will be achieved by removing all the barriers to women led development theek hai jitne bhi women led development ke samne barriers hain the mission the vision is to remove all such barriers so that all the women out there 
live their life with dignity right remember for achieving this vision uh, w20 will follow 4c strategy which is collaboration cooperation communication to build consensus and call to action so you should remember the 4c strategy which will be followed to achieve this vision of w20 right and along with this inception meet w20 international meet will take place in jaipur in rajasthan in the month of april and along with that w20 summit will also take place where it will take place it will take place in mahabalipuram which is in tamil nadu in the month of june 2023 all right so that is all about it and now let's come back to the question which of the following are amongst the priority areas so grassroots women leadership women entrepreneurship bridging the gender digital divide women and girls as change makers in climate change empowering women in agriculture is not one of the priority areas i believe the fifth one was creating pathways uh, to work through skill through education and skill development the fifth one was related to education and skill development so this is not one of the priority areas which means 1 2 3 and 4 option d will be the correct answer let's talk about question number 3 which country is the guest of honor country of the 31st edition of New Delhi Book Fair, which every year takes place in Pragati Maidan, which is in New Delhi. And yeah, so we have guest of honor country. So remember, this was the 31st edition of New Delhi Book Fair and every year it takes place in Pragati Maidan, right? And every year it is organized by National Book Trust, which works under, it is an organization under Ministry of Education and ITPO, which is India Trade Promotion Organization which works under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry headed by Piyush Goel and Education Ministry is headed by Dharmendra Pradhan, right? This year, the host, the, the guest of honor country was France and the theme was Azadi Ka Amrit Mahut Sab, all right? So that is it. And the correct answer, therefore, guys, is option E, France. France is the correct answer because that is the guest of honor country. This question is very important if I talk about the phase one examination. Question number four. Ishram portal was formed in Dash with an objective of creating a national database of the unorganized or migrant workers and to provide them with a universal account number. This portal has been integrated with Dash to get benefits of domestic as well as international jobs available on the portal. You need to fill the gaps. These two gaps you have to fill in this question. So let's move ahead to the news. Uh, because Ishram portal was launched in the year 2021. So the question is why it is in news, right? It is in news because Ministry of Labor and Employment, right? It This Ishram portal was set up by Ministry of Labor and Employment. And currently, right now, Ministry of Labor and Employment has initiated matching of Ishram beneficiaries data with the ration card data available, right? Jovi ration card ka data available hai, usko Ishram portal ek beneficiaries ke data ke saath match karaya jayega right so the ministry of labor and employment has initiated this process now this has been decided this has been initiated to ensure that all the ishram portal beneficiaries will get the benefits of ration card or nfsa right national food security act ka benefit unko mil sake Ishram portal seeks to extend the benefits of social security and welfare scheme to all the migrants or unorganized workers out there. Okay, that was the objective with which Ishram portal was formed. Now talking about Ishram portal guys, so remember Ishram portal was launched in, was established in 2021 by the Ministry of Labor and Employment to create a database. Database of what? database of unorganized and migrant workers and to provide them with a universal account number now what government will do with this database this database uh, with the help of this database government will provide social security benefits to the unorganized workers because abhi tak kya ho raha tha? there was no list there was no database of the unorganized worker so government did not know that how many workers or how many migrant workers or organized workers have got the benefits okay so, uska koi data nahi tha. Now, with the help of Ishram portal, the government will have all the data regarding the migrant workers and the unorganized workers, and it will be helpful for the government in providing social security benefits to them. All right. And remember, Ishram portal till now has been integrated with National Career Service portal 
through which the beneficiaries are getting benefits of availing the domestic and international job opportunities which are available on NCS portal. And it has also been integrated with Pradhan Mantri Shram Yogi Mandhan portal under which the government provides pension benefit scheme to the Shram Yogis or the laborers. All right. So that is all guys. And yeah, so it was formed in 2021. And this must be NCS portal because that is the portal which get which provide benefits of domestic as well as international jobs which are available on this portal. So 2021 comma NCS portal should be the correct answer option E. Let's move ahead to question number five. Agriculture and processed food products. One second. Yeah. Agriculture and processed food products export development authority which is APIDA has signed an MOU with Lulu Hyper Market LLC which is a private company to harness export potential of millets to countries belonging to which grouping or which group. Now we are in the international year of millets 2023 so various steps have been taken by the government of India to promote millets right and of course international year of millets was accepted by United Nations on the recommendation of government of India only. Okay? So this MOU has been signed between APIDA and LLU, not LLU, it is LULU, LULU Hypermarket LLC. Under this MOU, this LULU group will facilitate promotional activities for millet products and it will also enable display millets and its value added products in the international retail chains. Jab tak showcase hoga, tab tak Jo dikta hai, wahi dikta hai. All right. So this will be done by Lulu Group and APIDA will facilitate the millet manufacturers to send various samples of millet products to Lulu hypermarkets which will be showcased at its various outlets. Okay, so this will be done, these activities will be done under this MOU and this will of course help in harnessing the export potential of millets to the Gulf Cooperation countries, right? This MOU will give a boost to the export of millet products to the Gulf Cooperation countries GCCs. Okay? So that is all about this. So which group? It's, it's, it's option B. Gulf Cooperation countries. Option B is the correct answer. Question number 6. Pe jate isi baat pe. Where has the Coconut Development Board which works under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare in association with international coconut community organized international conference on trade and marketing <coughs> of coconut products. Okay? So that is the question. You just have to identify the location. Remember it was organized in Hyderabad in Telangana. Right? And it was organized by Coconut Development Board in association with International Coconut Community, ICC. These four sessions took place during the conference which you absolutely do not have to remember. Okay? Don't worry. These are uh, given here to you know basically understand that actually what happened during this conference so these four sessions took place during the conference and of course this the overall objective of this conference is to promote the coconut production and its export right now talking about the market of coconut in india so remember india is the largest coconut producing in the world with the global share jo share hai india ka that is 30.93% out of the total global share and India is followed by Indonesia and Philippines. Second number pe we have Indonesia. Third number pe we have Philippines. Okay? But remember India ranks second in the terms of productivity. We have 9346 nuts per hectares next to Vietnam which has 10,547 nuts per hectares. If you are not able to remember these numbers, no problem in that. Just remember India is the largest coconut producing in the country. But it is the second largest country in terms of productivity followed by Vietnam. Okay? Not followed by Vietnam. Vietnam ke baad India ka number aata. Okay? Coconut crop contributes around 307.956 million to country's GDP and earns export revenues of around 75,000 million. Okay? And these are not dollars, these are rupees. Dollar hoga toh jada ho jaya. Alright? And this number also you need not remember this is just for the basic understanding that how much uh, contribution coconut is giving to the country's GDP. So that's 307.956 million. Okay. All right. Now let's come back to the question. 
So where did it take place? The International Conference on Trade and Marketing of Coconut Products. Option A, Hyderabad in Telangana. It took place in Hyderabad. Let's move ahead to question number 7. Ministry of Electronics and IT has launched Grivan's Appellate Committee portal to serve as a faceless dispute resolution mechanism that makes digital platforms big and small accountable to digital nagriks. Digital nagriks means what digital citizens, nothing more than that. GAC is mandated to address the user's appeal within a period of how many days? Kitne din mein usko appeal ka reply dena padega, solve karna padega. Okay, so it is the Ministry of Electronics and IT which has launched Grivan's Appellate Committee portal. But before moving ahead to the portal, let's try and understand what is this Grivan's Appellate Committee? What it does? Iska kya kaam hai? Remember, this Grivan's Appellate Committee was formed under Information Technology, Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code Rules of the Year 2021 with an objective to ensure a safe, trusted and accountable internet for all the internet users in the country. Right? That was the objective. And it serves as an appellate body and it is mandated to look into the complaints. Complaints of what? Complaints regarding unsatisfactory grievance redressal by social media companies or enterprises. Agar mera koi grievance hai, and with, a, with any particular social media enterprises. And if that social media enterprises is not addressing my grievances, then I will go to this grievance appellate committee. And now, from now on, I can go to this committee with via this portal. Ab main is portal ke through ja sakunga, right? Which will provide me a faceless dispute resolution mechanism that makes digital platforms, either it is a small platform or a big platform accountable to the users or internet users or digital nagriks, right? Through it, users can file an, an appeal with the GAC within a period of 30 days from the date of receipt of communication from the intermediaries grievance officer. Intermediaries matlab that social media enterprises with which I filed my grievances, right? And GAC will also have to address the appeal within 13, 30 days. 30 days ke andar usko appeal ko address karna padega. Okay? So that is all and now let's come back to the question. GAC is mandated to address the user's appeal within a period of 30 days. Option D is the correct answer. Let's move ahead to question number 8. This is an important question. It is about a new program. Webhub Fellowship for Indian Diaspora Abroad has been launched by Ministry of Science and Technology. So you need to identify incorrect statement about it. Okay. <clears throat> so let's talk about it and then we will come back to the question. So it has been launched by Ministry of Science and Technology and the name is Weber Fellowship Program for Indian Diaspora Abroad and it was launched on the occasion of National Science Day which is every year observed on 28th of February. Now the objective of this, why? Why it has been launched? It has been launched to bring Indian origin researchers to higher educational institutions in the country. Whoever Indian origin researchers are there in the foreign universities, they will come to the Indian universities, they will do their researches and of course they will give a boost to the research ecosystem of higher education institution in the country. Okay? So let's talk about it in detail. The objective is to improve research ecosystem of India's higher education uh, institution by facilitating academic and research collaborations with best institutions in the world as I told you that is the objective. The duration of the fellowship will be three years and during these three years the, the, fellow, the fellows will get uh, you know the research opportunity to work for a minimum of one month to a maximum of two months a year with a research institution or any academic institution in India. Baki time wo apne institution mein rehke kar sakte hai. Okay? They have to do their research work for a minimum period of one month in India and for a maximum period of two months in a year in any academic institution in India. Right? That is a condition. And financial incentive remember up to rupees 37 lakh for the three year period of three year duration of fellowship. Maximum kitna hai? 37 lakh. This is up to 37 lakh. Right? This is the maximum amount. It means everyone will not get uh, everyone will not get this 37 lakh. Okay? 
आगे चलते हैं एलिजिबिलिटी की अगर हम बात करें तो रिमेम्बर दस्ट बी एन एन आर आई पी आई ओ और ओवरसीज सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया इट इट मस्ट हैव ऑप्टेन पी एच डी एम डी और एम एस डिग्री फ्रॉम एनी रिकॉग्नाइज इंस्टीट्यूशन विच इज इन द टॉप फाइव हंड्रेड ऑफ यू एस रैंकिंग एंड इट मस्ट बी ही मस्ट ही और शी मस्ट बी अ रिसर्च एंगेज इन एन ओवरसीज अकेडमिक रिसर्च और इंडस्ट्रियल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विद प्रूव ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड ऑफ रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट ठीक है सो दीज आर दी एलिजिबिलिटी मैक्सिमम अमाउंट थर्टी सेवन लैक ड्यूरेशन थ्री ईयर्स मिनिमम वन मंथ एंड मैक्सिमम टू मंथ्स के लिए वो यहाँ पे काम करेंगे इंडिया के किसी भी हायर एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन में द मिनिस्ट्री मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड दब्जेक्टिव इज टू इम्प्रूव द रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट इको सिस्टम ऑफ इंडिया हायर एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन ठीक है दैट इज ऑल एंड नाउ लेट्स कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन It has been launched by Ministry of Education. Is that so? No. It has been launched by Ministry of Science and Technology, headed by Dr. Jitendra Singh. Its duration is of not five years, but of three years. It offers selected research of financial in incentive up to rupees fifty lakhs. Not fifty lakhs. कितना था? Thirty seven lakhs. So all these statements are incorrect. It offers researchers opportunity to work for minimum one month to maximum of two months a year. विद रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूशन और एन अकेडमिक इंस्टीट्यूशन इंडिया बिल्कुल सही बात है एप्लीकेंट ऑफ दिस फेलोशिप मस्ट हैव ऑप्टेन पी एच डी एम डी और एम एस डिग्री फ्रॉम अर यस ये भी सही है सो फोर एंड फाइव आर करेक्ट बट रिमेम्बर वी नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट विच मीन ऑप्शन सी वन टू एंड थ्री ओनली विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर लेट्स मूव हेड टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन विच कंट्री हैज बीन कंफर्ट With Government Leadership Award 2023 by GSM Association at Mobile World Congress 2022, which took place in Barcelona in Spain, right? So this country is our pyara Bharat, India. India ko mila hai ye prize. So India has been uh, declared. India has been declared winner in the ceremony held at Mobile World Congress 2022, right? And It is the government leadership award which has been given to India. Government leadership award मिला है इंडिया को for implementing best practices in telecom policy, right? Why this award has been given? For implementing best practices in telecom and uh, telecom policy and regulation, right? Now this award has been given by GSMA, that is GSM Association. So let's talk about in brief about this organization in brief. Remember, this organization was established in the year 1995 with headquarters in London. ठीक है? The objective basically is to represent the interest, the interest of mobile network operators worldwide. ठीक है? पूरी दुनिया के जितने भी mobile network operators हैं, उनके interest को serve करना, address करना, that is the objective of this organization, right? And every year, Mobile World Congress is organized by GSMA, which is the world's largest gathering of the mobile operator mobile network operators right so which country is this this country is india option d is the correct answer let's move ahead guys now to the questions in short which do not need much explanation but before that if you want to have the pdf of this session this class you can join the telegram channel the link is provided in the description आगे चलते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन पे ट्राइबल को ऑपरेटिव मार्केट मार्केटिंग फेडरेशन ऑफ इंडिया ट्राइफेड ट्राइफेड ट्राइब इंडिया स्टोर प्रोडक्ट्स वो रिसेंटली टैग विद ओडीओपी एंड जोग्राफिकल इंडिकेशन विच मिनिस्ट्री इज इंप्लीमेंटिंग ओडीओपी आई डोंट थिंक कि इससे आसान क्वेश्चन आपको कभी जीवन में मिलेगा द मिनिस्ट्री विच इज इंप्लीमेंटिंग वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट इज मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री हेडेड बाई पीयूष गोयल Who is also the leader in Rajya Sabha? Option C is the correct answer. Question number eleven. Where has the Ministry of Ayush Sarvanand Sonowal is the minister organized the Chintan Shivir for Ayush to discuss the futuristic improvements in the implementation of existing policies and programs relating to Ayush sector and traditional medicine? Basically, it was a Chintan Shivir. It was a discussion Shivir. in which future regarding the implementation of existing policies and programs related to ayush sector and traditional medicine was discussed theek okay? hai 
and it took place at Kaziranga National Park, which is of course in Assam. Option A is the correct answer. आगे चलते हैं नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन पे लेटर ऑफ इंटेंट हैज बीन साइन बिटवीन डीएसटी एंड फ्रॉड ऑफर इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर सोलर एनर्जी सिस्टम्स फॉर अ लॉन्ग टर्म कोलैबोरेशन फोकसिंग ऑन हाइड्रोजन टेक्नोलॉजीज दीज डेज गवर्नमेंट इज फोकसिंग ऑन नेशनल हाइड्रोजन प्रोडक्शन बिकॉज ऑफ नेशनल हाइड्रोजन मिशन दैट वॉज लॉन्च राइट सो द क्वेश्चन इज वेरी इजी फ्रॉन ऑफर आई आई एस टी इज लोकेटेड वेर so it is located in the german company it is located in germany option b is the correct answer 13 where has the conference on sustainable development in india evolution and legal perspective held recently direct question you just have to identify the place the place in question guys is udaipur which is of course in rajasthan option b udaipur is the location where sustainable development in india summit took place not summit conference Which of the following organizations has organized hashtag Get It Right Brand Influencer Summit 2023 to highlight the importance of responsible advertisement advertising practices and consumer protection in Mumbai? Right. Whenever I see word this word advertising practices, I will mark the answer as Advertisement Standard Council of India, which is again the correct answer to this question option A. Which country is providing official development assistance to India for these projects? In all the projects, के लिए कौन सी country India को support दे रही है? Rupees one seven two eight crores for Mumbai Trans Harbour Link Project three, and five sixty crores for establishment of Mizoram State Super Speciality Cancer and Research Centre. So, can you identify this country? Which country is providing support to India for these two projects? Yes, the country in question is Japan. Option B. करेक्ट आंसर 16 पे आ जाते हैं वेयर हैज मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर ऑर्गेनाइज चिंतन शिविर ऑन ड्रग्स क्वालिटी रेगुलेशन एंड एनफोर्समेंट सो दिस इज अनादर चिंतन शिविर दैट वाज व्हिच वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर दैट वाज फॉर आयुष ड्रग्स एंड दिस इज फॉर ओवरऑल ड्रग्स क्वालिटी रेगुलेशन एंड एनफोर्समेंट राइट दैट वाज पर्टिकुलरली फॉर आयुष सेक्टर राइट एंड दिस वाज ऑर्गेनाइज्ड इन हैदराबाद ऑप्शन ई इज द करेक्ट आंसर Ministry of Communications has offered the usage of 5G test bed free of cost to the startups and MSME recognized by the government of India up to which month and year to encourage usage of the test bed and give a fillip to the development of indigenous technologies or products. So the government of India has allowed a certain number of startups and MSMEs which are recognized by the government of India to use 5G test bed absolutely free of cost. Up to January 2024, and that is why the correct answer is option C, January 2024. Question number, कुछ छूट गया क्या? No. Question number 18. Where has Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying, in collaboration with NDDB, National Dairy Development Board, Startup India, Confederation of Indian Industry (CII), organized? startup conclave to promote the existing and emerging startups in the livestock dairy and and animal husbandry sectors so you just have to identify the location rest of the thing are provided in this question it was organized by ministry of animal husbandry and dairying in collaboration with nddb startup india and cii right why the objective is also given you just have to identify the location The location is Hyderabad again. Option B is the correct answer. Question number nineteen: Which organization, with support from Ministry of Tourism, has signed an MOU with Switzerland-based Hotel and Tourism Management Institute to give a boost to skill development initiatives in hospitality sector? So this MOU has been signed for what? For giving a boost to skill development initiatives in the hospitality sector. because of covid 19 the hospitality sector went down drastically so now government of india is focusing on its development right and this mou has been signed by nsdc option b is the correct answer 20 which country which city will host the second of four business 20 india events scheduled in the northeast under india's g20 presidency so its first meeting took place in imphal Second in Ozar as all, right? 
third will take place in Gangtok, in Sikkim of course, and fourth will take place in Kohima in Laganand. So this was the second meeting, and therefore the correct answer is as all option B. Twenty one. National Science Day is observed every year on 28th February. What was the theme of this year? That is the question. So, this is a very important question, guys. Okay? The theme of National Science Day was Global Science for Global Well-Being. And, guys, the last question for today. Where has the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has organized the G20's second Environmental and Climate Sustainability Working Group meeting? So, this is the second. So, where was the first meeting took place first meeting took place in bangalore second one which is the question gandhi nagar gujarat third one will take place in mumbai and fourth one will take place in chennai so the correct answer guys to this question is what gandhi nagar all right so that is it for today's class and with this the month of february has been ended some of you might be thinking ki bhai अब तो फेब्रवरी भी एंड हो गया नोटिफिकेशन नहीं आया आरबीआई का डोंट वरी आ जाएगा डोंट वरी जस्ट डू योर वर्क लेट आरबीआई डू इट्स वर्क ठीक है आप अपना काम करो आरबीआई अपना काम कर रहा है वी ऑल नो दैट नोटिफिकेशन विल कम सो डोंट वेट फॉर द नोटिफिकेशन जस्ट गिव योर बेस्ट कि इतना बेस्ट दो कि इस बार आपका एग्जाम निकले राइट ओके एंड आई विल सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड इन द नेक्स्ट सेशन एंड विद दैट सेशन विल बी स्टार्टिंग द मंथ ऑफ मार्च गुड बाय टेक केयर एंड गॉड ब्लेस्ट